XS400 build back in here. We gotta get in gear and we gotta get this thing done. So in this box, I have all the electronics that I need for the bike, except for maybe one or two things. So let's go over what I'm going to use. All right, regulator rectifier, our DRR-F. That is a solid piece. I've talked about this before, I've made videos on it. We have our 105 decibel horn. This thing's just super simple. It's just a freaking horn. It's like 12 bucks. It's just a good thing. Starter solenoid kit, our Sol R. I have a video on this as well. Our ignition switch. This is a pretty cool item. Nice and simple. It's very compact. It's not any more fancy than it needs to be. It's just a solid, good switch. I've used this on other projects. I really like this. We have our LIFE4L. This is a lithium ferrophosphate battery that I offer, and this is going to be perfect for this bike. We include the charger and, of course, like an auxiliary plug. So this goes along with everything else that we offer, making it easy and providing everything you need. And, of course, our main piece, the entire electrical system is going to be based around an X21 Plus P. Now, I haven't made any content on the Plus yet, just been really busy, but the X21 Plus kit includes your billet throttle, and then, of course, your controls already pre-wired. So this is a billet housing on here, and this is going to be six momentary push buttons. So that's going to be a, a really clean setup for this bike. Now, of course, we have all the electrical components here. My uh, first focus is going to be the electronics tray, and for that we're going to be building it around the X21. So we'll get this thing out and figure out how big our tray needs to be. And being that this is going to be the only thing in the tray, we're going to be able to keep it really shallow. So this is going to be a really clean setup. Now to do this, you need to determine exactly what you're going to put in the electronics tray before you even start, because that's going to determine how much space you need vertically. Now with everything else, let's talk about where I want to locate things. So this is our regulator rectifier. There's already a little mount on the back of the frame right here, and I figured that's just a good spot to go ahead and put this thing. So I'll make a secondary tab to come down and just support this. And then what I'm thinking is trying something new and actually placing some electronics down in this little gap, like my starter solenoid. And that way, whenever I put the battery down here, okay, I can have a really short battery cable running up to the solenoid back and forth. That will also make my uh, charging system leads very short. Everything will kind of plug in right here and I can probably make like a little cover to go over this little access area, making it all nice and hidden. So I think that's going to be pretty cool. And then just the fact that I think it would be neat whenever I pop the seat off this thing to just have the X21. We're going to wire it super clean and I think that's just going to be awesome. So let's go ahead and start mocking up the tray. I'll show you guys my process for that. Now, even though every bike is different in design, like frame shape and of course components and where you're gonna put them, the premise is going to be the same on this one. What we will do is we're going to use a piece of 16 gauge sheet metal here. And what I like to do is do um, basically two to three, maybe even four folds upwards on the sides. I fit that tray within the frame and I kind of hammer the edges over them, creating a nice weld seam. I think that kind of uh, adds a little bit of strength to the bike and I just overall like the aesthetic of it and I feel like they fit very well every time that I've done them. So I'm just going to continue to do so. Now, looking at what I'm doing here, I'm starting to kind of lay out the, the base size of my tray. So with this particular bike, I went with 11 inches in total length. And then I went with an eight and a half inch wide bottom section in the rear. And then I went with, I think, a four and a half inch wide section in the front. Now we're doing that um, to kind of create just one single line to bend across. Now this is gonna create a little bit of an issue with the uh, sections of frame that you see here that kind of curve in. That's gonna create a little bit of interference, but I'll show you guys how to overcome that later in the video. So getting started, it's important you grab a pizza box. It's always uh, kind of the first thing you go to. So this is the trusty CAD system that I use, which is, you know, of course, cardboard aided design. And I've used this in all of my trays. I've shown how to do this in previous videos, so be sure to check those out. I'll link them above if you want more detail. But we're going to kind of cruise through this one. Now, of course, to design the tray and understand the height that you need, you need to determine exactly what you're going to be putting in the tray. Now, for me, I'm only going to be using the X21, which has a very low profile, 
which is something I wanted to do to just kind of make it extra super mega clean. It's going to look awesome whenever the thing's done and just pop the seat off and it's going to be the only component in there. Now because of that we can make the tray really shallow. So what I'm shooting for is about an inch and an eighth total height. Now you need to add that inch and an eighth on the side of your base plate to fold upwards and that's going to give you your depth. So go ahead and mark out your center on the cardboard and then you kind of get your base drawn and then you extend that by an inch and an eighth and that's going to give you the size that you fold up. Once I get my cardboard template cut out, I can kind of trim the sides here and start uh, folding the edges up and we can go ahead and do our first mock or test fit into the frame of the bike. Now it's not going to be perfect because of course you're going to have to do a whole lot of hammering when we get to the end here. So we can kind of get the general idea of how it's going to fit, make sure our widths are correct and make sure our height is correct. So out back here, it's going to fit a little bit better. And I can go ahead and start transferring this to metal. We have a good plan. We know how this is going to work. We know it's going to look good. So of course, transferring it to metal right now. I, again, I'm using 16 gauge steel. This is just commonly what I use. I feel like it has a good balance of being able to be worked with as far as bent as well as retaining a lot of strength. I know I can go lighter, but it gets a little bit flimsy in my opinion. So 16 gauge is typically what I go with. And I just uh, transfer it to metal using a marker. And then here you can see I actually make sure before I cut it out, I mark my centers and my bends and I just use a little center punch for that. And that's going to be because eventually or inevitably you're going to wipe off some of the marker that you might be using to mark your lines. And it just makes it easier to, to quickly go back and have a re-reference point whenever you're working with it in the future. So go ahead and center punch your marks, your bend lines. And then now I can go ahead and proceed to cut the shape out. We'll get it roughed in. And we are going to have to do some trimming before too long. So here you can see we have the piece cut out cleaned up and now it's time to actually start bending. So to get started with our bends, I will do the sides. Now to do that, I'm going to use my sheet metal brake, which is from Harbor Freight. It's a pile of crap. Don't buy it guys. It's really cheap. Uh, I've been limping it along this long, but I do plan to get something else. So anyway, we're going to use this hopefully one last time and then we'll move on to, to greater things, but get it all mocked up, get it clamped in. And I use a little bit of grease on here to try to help it along. It seems like it helped a little bit, but you know, we'll see. So bending it upwards, I did have to kind of hammer it past 90 
with my mallet here, you'll see why. Of course, we have to fit underneath those tubes. So go ahead and we got both sides bent. And then to bend that rear section, which is narrower, I can't exactly put it in the brake. So what I do here is I just have it in the vise and I kind of bent one side and then quickly unclamped the piece, moved it over just a little bit and then worked on bending the other side, which seemed to work just fine. Kind of a, a standard procedure here. You could also use a longer piece of angle iron in here and just match to your exact bend width and that would work really well. So next up, we're just doing a little bit of test fitting to the bike. So the way this one fits into the bike, I actually slide it in from the top in the back and then we kind of rotate it up into place. And the front you can see here is just gonna be kind of hanging down a little bit until we get more of that hammered into shape, but that's just fine. So now we can go ahead and actually start uh, tapping the rear into shape. And to do that, I'm just using a rubber mallet, two by four, the, the handle end of a hammer, just anything I can to kind of start getting it into shape. It's gonna look like trash before it gets any better, but just trust the process here. This is gonna work out great, it's gonna look good. So once we have the rear kind of in shape, I can go ahead and actually weld the corners here. Now the seam that is folded upward in the back and on the sides, that, that's gonna create a little bit of seam. And if I don't weld it now, it's gonna be very difficult, if not impossible, to weld it whenever I get it on the bike permanently. So you can see here, I'm just using my TIG. And for this being 16 gauge steel, I'm just using silicon bronze, which is a, a lower amperage filler rod which allows me to kind of control a little bit better and prevent any kind of risk of burn through, or at least decrease the risk. So I have both corners welded up and then I just go ahead and sand them smooth. I just used a flap disc for this one, nothing fancy, just get it knocked down. And I only welded about halfway up because the, the other half we're going to actually, you know, kind of form into shape and we'll weld on the bike. All right, I've been fine tuning a little bit more. On the bottom here, you can see I've, I went ahead and bent this front lip up. Still have some overhangs here, so what I'll do is cut that with the angle, and I'll actually end up tying the bottom together, and then about halfway up, the rest of this will start bending out. But the way I bent it meets right up with this gap, so we'll weld it there. And then that leaves our pockets here on the edges. So like I said, I'll trim these down. I'll go ahead and weld this little seam. And then at that point, it's time to get this thing in here, in here permanently. So I can't bend this any further without it just kind of distorting. So I need to get it all jigged up and then we'll start tacking it and then bending everything out as we go. So this is the part where we gotta make it look a whole lot worse before it gets better. But go ahead and kind of fit this thing in the bike and then I'm going to start in the rear and work my way forward. So in back, it's pretty easy. That thing lays out real nice. I can just kind of clamp it in place using that piece of angle iron that I welded in. Now up front, 
I actually had to use a series of C-clamps to kind of hold the uh, hold the, the tray itself upward enough to allow me to then hammer the sides out without it pushing down. If I didn't have the clamps there trying to, to hammer the sides out, it would actually force the tray lower, which would mess up my entire gap and everything like that. And then from here, I'll just lay a few tacks in, get it held into place, and then I can start working on the front. And eventually, got where I needed to go, and it allowed me to kind of line up the front seam with the lower tank mount. And here you can see I'm using silicon bronze again, locking it in, and now we can work on the sides. Now from here, it's just gonna be a lot of kind of tapping and getting this thing really kind of worked into shape. So you can see here, I'm using everything from a block of wood to a rubber mallet to actually my ball peen hammer to kind of really get it in shape. So with the front locked in, I can go ahead and start tacking all of the, all of the sides of this thing. So what I did is I used a clamp to kind of keep everything really tight in place, tack one spot, move the clamp, tighten it up, tack that spot, so on and so forth. As you can see, I'm just working my way around the bike real easy. Now with everything tacked in place, I can go ahead and take my ball peen and just uh, tap any last remaining sections I feel could fit a little bit better. And from here, we just start welding. So with welding the sides and back up, what I did is I just used a regular mild steel filler rod, some ER70, and then I just staggered where I was laying beads to try to kind of move the heat around and prevent any kind of further distortion or anything like that, because that is something you definitely will have with an electronics tray, and especially why I don't want to use anything thinner than, say, 16 gauge. And there you go. It's welded up, and with a TIG, there's no cleanup or anything like that. This is definitely something you can MIG weld. I have done them in the past like that. It just takes a little bit more finishing work to go ahead and you know get the grinder out and just clean everything up because naturally that's how a MIG will look. But never feel like you have to have a TIG to do this job. Again, I have used a MIG many times in the past. All right, the tray is done. It is final welded and it is looking great. So in here, I just have the X21. You can see how shallow this thing is. There's really no side profile to it. So it's gonna look really cool when we pop the seat off and this is the only thing in the tray. I like my idea of putting some other electronics down here and under the swing arm. So pretty excited to do that. And then up next, I'm gonna start working on seat pan probably tomorrow because I need to make sure I mock the seat up around the back of the fuel tank because I really wanna take the tank to my painter and just get the process started on that because I need to I need to get that thing painted just to meet my deadline that I have for uh, early February for this thing and that's rapidly approaching so I really wanted to paint this tank myself but I don't think it's the right time to kind of learn that skill right now so I just want to outsource it like I normally do and uh, we'll you know we'll get it on the next one but hopefully the video on this is very clear and lets you guys get an understanding of what it takes to do a trade like at least like I do you guys can get out in your shed, utilize this information, and build something cool yourselves. Hopefully you guys like this video though. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll be sure to get right back to you. Check out some other videos on the channel. Hit up my website. You can pick up an X21 or some other motorcycle parts that we're using all over this build. But I'm going to get back to work on this thing, and hopefully soon we'll have another video on it. So anyway, again, hope you guys like this one. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.